Megan, it's so lovely to chat to you today. Um, just to give our viewers an introduction to Megan. Uh, Megan is one of the, the Slender Warriors that we featured in our blog section in our Slender Wonder magazine. Um, Megan is from Bloemfontein, a mom of three, and she has gained a new lease on life, which we are fortunate enough to explore today with Megan. Megan, thank you so very much um, for taking the time and chatting to us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And it's such a blessing to be here. Thank you. Fantastic. Uh, let's dive right in to your why, Megan. Um, so what was your final straw and what made you decide that I need to change my lifestyle um, and not just my, my, you know, lose weight? What was the, what was the, the thing that said to you, this is enough? Well, enough has actually been coming since I was very young. Um, I would probably say when I was still at school, I've always been extremely weight conscious. And coming back to my era, where now you have the Kardashians flaunting their sex sexy behinds and not the front of their bodies, which has been very prominent. In my era, um, anything big was really not pretty you have to be as skinny as possible and then that was considered as beautiful so weight issues have always been an issue for me my entire life so i've tried everything i've done everything i've had very highs i've had very very lows and i think after many many years of putting my body through so much from training i used to i used to train so hard i would run to the gym, do an aerobics class, do a, a muscle training session, and then I jog back home, which was nine kilometers away. So I've always been active. I've always wanted to, to be and feel good. Um, the older you get, <laughs> the more difficult it becomes due to many factors. It could be hormonal or just it's in your DNA. So you have to deal with it. And I'm a person, if you tell me, this is the problem. I take it, I deal with it, and I carry on. But if I can't carry on, I get stuck. So uh, a couple of years back, I was diagnosed with a hypothyroidism. So it, just to put it in English, plain English, and people might be aware of it because it's a very, uh, um, it's, it's, a, it's a disease that happened to many, many women. At the time that I was diagnosed, it was at a percentage of 25% of all women in South Africa get diagnosed with thyroid thyroid problems, whether it be hypo or hypo. And um, I lost an, amount, an immense amount of weight because everybody thinks the thyroid, you know, it affects your system. So immediately you lose weight, which you do. But the opposite also happens. So once I've gone through this process, I picked up an excessive amount of weight. After weighing like 60 kilograms, I went to like 85, 87 kilograms. And it was devastating because I blew up, I was bloated, uh, I got Graves disease in my eyes, um, I lost most of my hair, so I didn't feel like a woman. And I wanted to take my life back, and I did, and I started fighting. It took me quite some time, because it was the birth, after the birth of my third child, and he was six months old. And um, it took me three years to, to feel like myself again. And I said, Lord, how do I do this? <laughs> and lots of things came along my road. Um, I didn't have eyebrows. So I said, well, I don't have eyebrows. What do I do with it? Okay, let's do some microblading. <gasps> I don't have lashes. Okay, let's put some lashes on. Okay, you know, I wanted to take my life back. I love my husband. He said to me, I love you. And I said to him, but I'm broken. I'm broken. And I think most people, most women feel broken. And when you're broken, you don't feel worthy. And that's not the truth. And my husband still said to me, I'll never forget. He says, no matter what you look like, you're always beautiful to me. But I knew for me to keep the relationship strong and together, I needed to feel good about myself. I need to want to get dressed with the lights on. <laughs> I wanted to not be afraid to go onto the beach and run in a costume and have people stare at me because I'm obese. I didn't like that feeling. So once again, I started fighting. So I went back into immense training and it took me very long to lose the weight. And it's always been a constant battle. As soon as my, my, um, my thyroid counts are a little bit out, 
I immediately pick up weight. I don't have control of it. It causes me to have excessive uh, um, water, retre water retention, which has been a problem my entire life. And then I got to a stage where I was insulin intolerant. So I had all of this going on. And then um, my eldest daughter got engaged. And we were also excited and also afraid. And we are, we're getting older and our kids are getting older. How do I deal with this? How do I go back to being a woman again after fighting and fighting? I picked up the weight again because I just couldn't regulate the weight. And it was about in August 2020. And I, she um, told me about this eating program that she was on and that she was going to go on for her wedding. And she introduced me to Slender Wonder. And she looked fabulous. And I liked the fact that it was so structured. I have a bit of OCD. So I like structure in my life because I'm constantly jugg juggling many things. I have three businesses. I have three kids. I'm a granny now, and I want to embrace everything. I don't want to miss out anything in life. So I decided, well, if she could do it, let's give it a try. So that was my main goal. When I started doing the program, it was about me looking and feeling good for my daughter's wedding. But that wasn't the just, the just of the journey. It was the start of the journey. That's fantastic. And congratulations on uh, being a grandmother. Well, you look fabulous, um, a yeah. fabulous looking grandmother. Um, and, and you were with Dr. Phoebe Nell, am I correct? That's correct, yes. Okay. From so, uh, a general practice yeah. in Bloemfontein. And right. she's so, so staff, see? Pretty looking, pretty good looking GP, yes. <laughs> She's definitely um, a, a poster doctor for, for the Slender Wonder Group. Um, so Megan, take us through moments where you experienced some tough times during your Slender Wonder Challenge. Because, you know, we know it's not an easy program. It's very strict. It is structured, which helps a lot. But at the end of the day, we're all human and we are faced with many social gatherings um, or just times of, you know, feeling tired um, and you... you which moments were really tough for you and how did you overcome them? Um, I have to say when I started the program and I have to tell you maybe the first two weeks getting used to the amounts of food that you have to eat because when you look at it initially you think oh my word I could eat so much more than this I mean people really have to get through the day and then the first <laughs> two weeks you start eating and you think oh okay this is not so bad this food is actually nice um, then I would say about right about the fourth day, not even that long, the portions seemed to fill me up, which surprised me because it happened very, very quickly. It wasn't a matter of me, oh, it took me months getting used to the program. I had an immediate effect to, to, to the program, which surprised me as well due to the thyroidism. So I immediately started reacting to it. So the beginning phase, and I would say the first 10 kilos was like, whoa, it was like a slide in, man. I just handled this and I took a decision. When I when I started the program, I said to myself, look, I'm, I'm going to be spending money. I'm investing in my body. I'm investing in my health. I'm investing in my mind. So if I'm going to do this, I've got to be all in. Heart, body, and soul. That's it. So that, drew, that carried me really through to the first 10 kilograms. And what I did is I said to myself, listen here, when you reach that 10 kilograms, give yourself a huge reward. Now at that stage, when you're on the eating program, a huge reward is a plate of fried chips with salt and vinegar and all gold tomato sauce, okay? That's it, okay, no, sorry. And two glasses of beer, all right? That was a totally cheap date, I have to say. But the thing is, once you've cheated, okay, then you think, oh, have I put on any weight? Oh my goodness, you know, um, have I affected the program? Have I affected the process? Yes, you have. But then again, you have the choice. Do I crumble or do I pick up the gauntlet and I carry on? And I'm a driver and I'm a fighter. And I realize if I don't fight for my health, okay, I'm not going to be somebody who is 60 or 65 even and being able to swim a Midmar or ride an August or do um, Italy on a motorbike with 
with my husband. So I picked up the gauntlet and I kept going. So I constantly set goals for myself. I apologize. I constantly set goals for myself because with having goals, it keeps up the hope. You have to have hope that you can do this and you need to believe in yourself. If you believe in yourself and you have hope, then you can do so much more. So the one challenge is when you get to that point, if you are somebody that gets yourself goals, is yes, okay, now I've given myself that, that reward, but I have to carry on. The biggest challenge for me, the biggest challenge for me came only now, the beginning of the year. Um, I had been off uh, Slender Wonder for, for probably about three months. I'd still use the shake because I really love it and it tastes amazing. I use collagen every single day because now I can go blonde, which I haven't been able to do in 12 years. So um, I use collagen every morning. So the shake is fabulous. Yeah, I've always been on the shake. And we came back from holiday and, you know, life started. And it was uh, my son going to grade eight and all these things happening and it's wonderful and my daughter's pregnant and all these things are happening and then life happened. Um, my daughter, my youngest daughter got ill and she was in hospital for a while. Um, my eldest daughter had her baby, she delivered her baby at 31 weeks. So with all of this happening, my OCD, which really kept me on target and within my profile where I would do planning, prepare my foods, prepare my, my, um, my pills that I have to drink. I mean, I set that up every Sunday that I know I'm ready for the week and that I'm not gonna fall back into a bad routine. You know, I prepare my meals, I cut up my veggies and my fish and my meat and et cetera. Life happened and I was spending less and less time at home um, concentrating just on life and living and enjoying, but on praying and supporting the people I love and praying that our grandchild would live. And um, it was a very trying time. And when you go through those immensely difficult times, the last thing that you focus on is looking after your weight, looking after yourself. Because as soon as you start having to look after other people, which is not wrong, you must take care of other people, but you have to take care of yourself as well. But when it came so close to home, it was so difficult to stick to any program whatsoever. And then I actually picked up weight. And I cannot tell you how much weight it is because I don't believe get on getting on a scale. Because if I get on a scale in the morning and I see that I picked up three kilograms, that's how I feel for the whole day for the next Next week I'm miserable I'm mopey and that will make me eat more so then I say to myself okay what is, what is happening when I realize oh my clothes don't fit me the way I used to these little tiny clothes that I love so much can't fit into them anymore what are you going to do about it then I got the face where I said listen stop the bus life happened but now we have to move on we've hit the speed bump now you've got to get back into the horse so last week Monday I walked into Phoebe's office, went and I bought my injections, got my medications, and I said, see you later. And she said, come, let's weigh you quickly. I said, no, don't weigh me. I've got this. I've got this. I went back on, onto my eating program. It's been a week and a half. I'm back into my smaller sizes. I'm not in my tiny size yet, but I'm back into my smaller sizes. My water retention went back within two days of being on the eating program my water retention disappeared. And um, I feel so much better. I'm back into clothes I wasn't wearing. And it was just that, that was the difficult thing of taking the decision of knowing life has happened, but I can still live and I need to take control. So even when you reach the speed bumps and you get them, believe you me, you get them. That was the most difficult. With people telling me, oh, why do you want to lose so much weight? Why are you on an eating program? Oh, that's a diet. Oh, why are you using injections? I've got lots of answers for that. But some fights I fight, the other fights I keep quiet, and the rest I just smile and wave. That's so inspirational, Megan. Um, and you've actually covered so many things that I've, I wanted to ask you about preparation and, and so forth. And that is really the big thing um, when it comes to, to weight loss is, you know, understanding and, and being gentle with yourself that it's a journey. 
um, and there, there, there will be speed humps, but just to get back onto the road again um, and to do it for yourself. Um, we, we often see people, you know, starting the program for a specific reason, whether it's for December holiday or a wedding and so forth. Um, and then they end up realizing that they should actually be making a change in their lifestyle in order to keep the weight off. And, you know, once you do pick up two or three or four or five kilos, it's much easier to lose that then waiting until it becomes 10 or 20. So that's really great that you, you know, found the courage after all of this, you know, drama you went through to, to restart the program. So my, my last question and, and to close this very awesome interview off with you, I mean, I can chat to you the entire day. You're so inspirational. Um, if you could inspire one person with advice or a tip, um, what would it be? Find what makes you happy. Find what makes you happy. Because if you realize what makes you happy, I think that, that is a, a good road to start on to self-acceptance. And if you're happy with yourself, then you are willing to try new things in life. You're willing to get off the couch um, and do a little bit more. And once you start, and I know this is such a cliche, but it's so, so important. You need to love yourself for who you are. Because once you've self-accepted, you can set goals. You can, you, can, you can start dreaming again. And it doesn't mean I'm 50 years old, okay? I say that with a breeze because I don't care because I have so many dreams. There's so much I still want to do. And I have so many plans and I'm living it each and every day and I'm so blessed but I know the only way I get to live a full life is if I'm healthy and you cannot buy health your health is the number one thing you cannot buy it you can fight it you can work with it but if you can make a difference today if you can make a difference today and it doesn't matter how old you are you can start at 60 if you want it will make a difference because even living five years to the full is better than never to have lived to the full. Wow, that's so stunning. Megan, thank you once again for not just inspiring people, but just being a beacon of light that no, no matter what you go through, no matter how busy you are, how many kids you are, have, sorry, um, that, that you can really do this and, um, you look amazing and we are rooting for you and thank you. thank you thank you thank you thank you i really appreciate this i'm looking forward to a fabulous day my uh, grandson who is now two months old is coming to visit us for the first time so after this i have a lot of um putting together of stuff granny has bought him and uh for the rest of the weekend i'm going to be in my lounger uh, um outfits and I'm just going to be playing and burping and anybody else who wants to call me can call me. But it's wonderful that you've given me the opportunity to be able to share my story because you will not believe how many people talk to me and will stop me and say, what have you done? Um, I met somebody in Johannesburg of a lady who's got immense problems uh, with, with, with her heart. Um, and just by telling her, listen, I understand and I was obese and I also have a, a, a chronic disease, but it's okay. She started crying and it was so nice to feel that you're not alone in a journey. You're never alone in a journey, but thank you. Thank you so much, Megan. We really appreciate you. Thank you. God bless. Have an awesome day, hey? Thanks, you too.